My name is Martin Agboje, the president of ISOP Nigeria chapter and the member of the board of directors of ISOP. On behalf of the ISOP team in Nigeria, I welcome you to this uh, 14th session of ISOP Nigerian chapter by monthly webinar tagged ISOP Nigeria Knowledge Update Series. So today we have a very important topic for discussion, uh, which is uh, the use of methamphetamine in Nigeria, uh, trend and threat analysis. Uh, you will agree with me uh, that uh, a topic on methamphetamine is an interesting one. And I want to believe there will be a lot of questions today. So please feel free to use the chat box to send your questions and share your thoughts during the presentation. So to lead this uh, discussion today is uh, Dr. Arit Isang Bedo, uh, why a gentleman, Bishop Oguje, will be moderating the session with me. Uh, EJK Meoguje uh, is a member of the editorial team of ISOP Nigeria chapter. So he will be handling the Q&A session today. So just a brief bio of uh, the speaker for today. Uh, Dr. Esang Bedo obtained uh, her medical degree from the University of Calabar in Nigeria and an MBA in healthcare management from Warden University in Baltimore, Maryland, United States. Uh, she is a fellow of the West African College of uh, Physicians and Psychiatry and an international certified addiction practitioner. Dr. A. Sang Bedo currently serves as a consultant psychiatrist at the Substance Use Disorders uh, uh, and Research Unit of the Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital in Yaba, Lagos State, Nigeria, where she has worked since 2009. Given her strong interest in substance use prevention, diagnosis, and treatment, uh, she has devoted much of her work to improving the substance abuse unit at the Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, particularly focusing on addressing the unique needs of adolescents and women. Dr. Esang Bedo is a member of the International Society of Substance Use Prevention and Treatment Professionals, that is ISOP, and the participants at the ISOP 2022 Global Conference in Abu Dhabi. Just before I in, uh, bring the speaker in, uh, let me uh, seize uh, this opportunity uh, to let uh, uh, everyone know or to state that uh, this webinar is provided for information or knowledge uh, purposes uh, only and uh, does not constitute uh, medical or treatment uh, advice. So the views presented here, uh, those of the speaker and the moderators are not necessarily uh, those of uh, ISO. So at this moment, uh, let me invite uh, Dr. Isang Bedo to take it up from here. Doctor, over to you. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Martin, for the introduction and welcome everybody. Once more, my name is Dr. Arita Sangbedo, and today we'll be talking about the use of methamphetamine in Nigeria, trend and threat analysis. So um, I want everyone to relax and listen so that you can ask appropriate questions. So we're going to start. Um, we'll go with this outline. What is methamphetamine, the history, factors influencing use, harmful effects of use, brain response to use, stages of met use, the NIDA principles for effective drug treatment, non-pharmacological and pharmacological treatment, global trends, trends in Nigeria, the threats, conclusion, and references. So what is meth? This is a potent central nervous system system stimulant used as a recreational drug. It is categorized as a Schedule II drug. It has a high potential for abuse and can lead to severe psychological or physical dependence. When it is abused, it creates an intense rush of energy and euphoria. 
Methamphetamine is an amphetamine derivative and most widely manufactured amphetamine type stimulant. In the powder form, it can be ingested orally, can be snorted, smoked, injected, insufflated, or inserted into the rectum. In the crystalline form, it can be injected or smoked. Street names include bead, ice, crystal meth, crank, tina, mpurumiri, glass, shank, etc. Now, the production of methamphetamine using the warm pot shake and bake method or two liter bottle method leads to serious burns and fire incidences while also producing potentially dangerous toxic waste. Hence, this is a public health hazard. Now, it is a lipophilic um, substance because of its addition of a methyl group, hence making it easy to penetrate into the central nervous system. It has a half-life of about approximately 12 hours compared to that of cocaine, which is appro approximately two hours. Its euphoric effect is short-lived, disappearing almost before significant changes in concentration in the bloodstream, hence the binge and crash use pattern. Its longer half-life and lower cost has earned it the name four months cocaine, and that's a chemical <clears throat> representation of methamphetamine. So let's look at the history. This was, it was first discovered in the 1800s, it was synthesized from ephedrine, it is produced by chemically adjusting its parent drug, the amphetamine. It was originally produced in Japan for medical purposes as a nasal decongestant medication and bron bronchial inhalers. It was further synthesized into crystal form in 1999. It was widely popularized during the World War II when it was used by the military to enhance performance of the soldiers to keep them awake and alert and to fight fatigue and depression. It went mainstream post-World War II, when the meth stored for military, military use became available to the public and people began to use it recreationally. The Japanese organized crime, crime syndicate, took advantage of the meth surplus and began to distribute methamphetamine. In the 1960s, IV meth use spread through the subcultures, leading to more violent and erratic behavior and more emergency presentation in the ER prompting attention by the medical authorities to call for close regulation in its use. In the 70s, the US government made legislation that restricts legal production and use. In the 80s, a purer and smokable form of meth appeared in Hawaii. Between the 90s and 2000s, there was an explosion in the number of meth labs. By 2005, the Combat Methamphetamine Epidemic Act was set up to limit the sale of certain meth ingredients and required purchase to be recorded. Till date, seizure data continues to report increase in meth production, trafficking, and abuse globally. What are the factors influencing use? Alert, alertness and euphoria from use tend to last longer than that gotten from stimulants like cocaine. It improves sexual pleasure and performance, enhances sexual exploration, Enhanced concentration, this is particularly seen in students who use it to study. Improves energy for work performance, relieves chronic pain and emotional problems, and promotes weight loss. This is an anecdotal report. So um, Dr. Martins, do you mind playing this video so that we can see how the brain responds to methamphetamine? Yes, please, uh, Oliver. Olivia, okay. Olivia, please go ahead with the video. Deep within the brain is a set of structures called the limbic system. The limbic system Deep within the brain is a set of structures called the limbic system. The limbic system contains the brain's reward circuit or pathway. 
The reward circuit links together a number of brain structures that control and regulate our ability to feel pleasure. Feeling pleasure motivates us to repeat behaviors. When the reward circuit is activated, each individual cell in the circuit relays electrical and chemical signals. The small gap between the sending and receiving cells is called the synapse. In the reward circuit, dopamine neurons release the neurotransmitter, dopamine. The released dopamine molecules travel across the synapse and link up with proteins called dopamine receptors on the surface of the receiving cell. When dopamine binds to the exterior of the dopamine receptor, this causes proteins attached to the interior part of the receptors to carry the signal onward within the cell. Some dopamine molecules re-enter the sending cell via dopamine transporters and can be re-released. When a reward is encountered, the presynaptic cell releases a larger amount of dopamine in a sudden burst. Dopamine transporters will then quickly remove the excess. Dopamine surges in response to natural rewards help the brain learn and adapt to a complex world. However, drugs are able to hijack this process, contributing to unhealthy behaviors and consequences. When someone first uses methamphetamine, the drug quickly enters the brain. At low doses, meth blocks the re-entry of dopamine into the presynaptic cell, just like cocaine does. But unlike cocaine, higher doses of meth can increase the release of dopamine from the cell, leading to much, much more dopamine in the synapse, where it becomes trapped since meth prevents the transporters from removing it. Because so much dopamine remains in the synapse for such long periods of time, the postsynaptic cell is activated to dangerously high levels causing the user to experience powerful feelings of euphoria, making meth incredibly addictive. Thank you very much for that video. Thank you, Olivia. So let's go on. So let's look at the stages of meth use. So the first stage is the rush or flash stage. There's an initial response felt when smoking or injecting meth. This response lasts for about 30 minutes. And then we move to the high stage, which can last between four to 16 hours. Usually the user feels aggressive, feels smarter, argumentative, and has this delusional effect of becoming intensely focused on an insignificant item. Example, packing and repacking clothes for hours, cleaning, washing for hours. The next stage is the binge. This is the uncontrolled use stage. Because they want to try to maintain this, uh, um, this high, this can last for about three to 15 days. The user is hyperactive mentally and physically. For every smoke or injection, the rush is smaller till no rush or high occurs. This takes us to the tweaking stage. This is the most dangerous stage. Now this is the end of the binge as the meth no longer provides a rush or high. The user loses sense of identity. There's intense, intense eating. They can't sleep. They may become psychotic and eventually become a danger to self and others. The next stage is the crash stage the body shuts down. It can no longer cope with overwhelming effect of the drug. Hence, long period of sleep occurs, and this can last for one to three days. The next stage, the meth met hangover stage. After the crash, user is in a deteriorated state. The user is starved, dehydrated, physically, mentally, and emotionally exhausted. At this stage, the addiction kicks in, as the only way to stop feeling this way is to use meth again. This can last for two to 14 days. The last stage is the withdrawal stage. This can often last for 30 to 90 days and can elapse even before user realizes that he or she is in a withdrawal state. There's depression, low energy, and hedonia, that's loss of interest in pleasurable activity. Then craving for more meds sets in and user often becomes suicidal. 
Met withdrawal is painful and difficult, so most users may tend to continue to use. So let's look at the harmful effects. We have the biological effect where we have raised blood pressure, cardiac arrhythmias, dental problems, stroke, Parkinsonism, seizures, um, there's increased physical activity, decreased appetite, faster breathing, um, increased body temperature, sleeplessness, weight loss, often extreme severe dental problems, intense eating or skin crawling. Mental symptoms include psychosis, hallucination, especially sensation of something crawling in the skin. That's why they, they scratch, you see them scratching a lot. Failure to quit despite recognizing the harmful impact of the drug, emotional or sensory blunting, confusion, anxiety, paranoia, hiding usage, taking drugs just in case, or taking drugs outside of a prescription, obsession for meth, violent behavior, doctor shopping or lying to get the drug, instability and memory loss. So this is a picture of um, the brain. You can see that the areas where, when the, person, the user is using, the areas that are most affected are the areas that the limbic system, the areas that affect emotion, reward, and um, memory. Um, psychological effects. You have dependence, anxiety, homicidal and suicidal thoughts and attempts, psychosis, such as delusions, hallucinatory experiences, depression, insomnia, change in personality profile. The social effect in, includes violence or aggressive behavior, criminal offending, financial and occupational problems, marital and relationship problems. So how do you identify one on meth? So signs of meth addiction include a significantly altered physical appearance, anxiety and restlessness, money problems, has a hard time sustaining a job, no longer attends social engagement or activities. Now the, the risk of relapse and overdosing on meth. So in most instances, overdose occurs when users relapse after having quit. They tend to go back to their old using habits. They use the same amount of the drug they were accustomed to in the past. Then their tolerance levels have diminished, causing the person to overdose. So the person probably before he went in for treatment was using five grams. And then he now goes back to use, instead of starting from a lower dose and titrating upwards, goes immediately to start using the five grams five grams he was using and now tells the person into an overdose. What are the risk factors for use? History of heroin or opiate use, history of smoking or using alcohol, risky sexual behavior, some psychiatric disorders, family history of drug or alcohol use, family history of crime, and female sex. What are the neither principles of effective drug treatment? You have addiction is a complex or treatable disease that affects brain function and behavior. There's no single treatment for everyone. Treatment varies depending on the type of drug and characteristics of the patient. Treatment needs to be readily available. Effective treatment attends to multiple needs of the individual, not just his or her drug abuse. Remaining in treatment for an adequate period is very important. Behavioral therapies, including individual, family, or group counseling are the most commonly used form of drug abuse treatment. Medications are important element of treatment for many patients, especially when combined with counseling and other behavioral therapies. An individual treatment and services plan must be assessed continually and modified as necessary to ensure that it meets his or her changing needs. Many substance use individuals also have other comorbid physical and mental disorders. Medically assisted detoxification is only the first stage of addiction treatment and by itself does little to change long-term drug abuse. Treatment does not need to be voluntary to be effective. Drug use during treatment must be monitored continuously as laps during treatment do occur. So let's look at the pharmacological treatment. Developmental, development of therapies for methamphetamine has to start from an early stage. There's no substantial evidence for use of one effective treatment yet. Now, track zone shown shows significant subjective um, effect on drug independent users. It also significantly blocks craving. Bupropion could be effective in early methamphetamine abstinence to decrease withdrawal symptoms and cognitive deficits. A clinical trial investigated interactions between bupropion and methamphetamine 
revealed non-exacerbation of met induced cardiovascular effects. Euphoria and craving significantly can be reduced with bupropion. Bupropion and cognitive behavioral therapy CBT shows promising results with less methamphetamine use in subjects. Modafinil, a non-amphetamine stimulant, may also be effective in treating meth dependence. It can be potentially, it can potentially reduce withdrawal symptoms and produce cognitive benefits leading to improved response to behavioral techniques. Other agonist replacement medications such as D-amphetamine also shows promising, um, similar promise. What are the non-pharmacological treatments? We have behavioral therapies, cognitive behavioral therapy, contingency management interventions, the matrix model, self-self facilitation therapy, and family behavioral therapy. So let's look at the global trend. The first country to report misuse of um, the drug was in Japan, circa 1945. According to United Nations on Drug and Crime, there were 27 million users of meth worldwide in 2019. Between 2005 and 2009, 79 countries reported seizure of methamphetamine worldwide. By the next decade, 2015 to 2019, this number increased to about 111 countries. Production and trafficking are continuously evolving. UNODC noted that 1 billion meth tablet seizures were made in East and Southeast Asia in 2021. This was more than that of crystalline and powder form by 3.2 tons and 1.5 tons respectively, while the liquid form seizure also dropped from 6.4 tons in 2020 to 908 kilograms in 2021. So you have more tablets in circulation than others. Most meth, meth consumed is produced and distributed locally. UNODC reports point, UNODC report points to lack of official check and control of meth and, uh, and control of meth and political instability in the so-called golden triangle of countries where meth originates and is moved across porous borders, in particular, in particular Myanmar, Thailand, and Laos. It, is all, it also reports that due to its cheap price and availability along with high purity, it remains the primary drug of concern to all countries, especially in East and Southeast Asia, from China to Japan, and from Indonesia to Singapore. So the trend in Nigeria, an exponential increase in both use and production of meth has been documented in Africa, Nigeria being the second largest producer in Africa after South Africa. In the past decade, the production of methamphetamine in Nigeria has increased exponentially, with quantity of meth seized increasing from about 177 kg in 2012 to about 1.3 tons in 2017. In 2018, UNODC estimated that about 89,000 Nigerians used meth. The first meth lab was discovered by N Nigerian Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, in July 2010, in a place called Monkey Village in Lagos, Southwest Nigeria, with the capacity of manufacturing about 25 to 50 kg batches of meth. Eight months later, a second facility was discovered in satellite towns in St. Lagos, Southwest Nigeria, and three Bolivians and one Nigeria were arrested. In 2016, experts from South America were imported to Nigeria by drug syndicates to set up meth labs. When a site in a village in Southeast Nigeria was raided by NDLEA, four Mexicans and five Nigerians were arrested. Between 2011 and 2022, nearly 25 meth labs has been dismantled by men of NDLEA. That's a picture of the um, Nigerians and Mexicans. Recently, on the 30th of July, 2022, two meth labs were busted in Lagos, Southwest Nigeria, where 248.74 kg of meth was recovered, and in Oka, Southeast Nigeria, and the meth barons were arrested by NDLE. So these are the newspaper clippings that um, announced all this happening. And that's um, the house where all the meth um, paraphernalia and the pots that were used to cook the meth down there. In 2021, the House of Reps asked the NDLE to intensify their raids on meth labs in Nigeria. Federal government was 
Us was also urged to develop policies to curb the spread of meth and other narcotics across the country. This was particularly due to the fear surrounding the effect of meth on the mental health of its user. As one of the lawmakers stated, I'll read, it does sound like a joke, but it's actually very serious and killing a lot of people. In the next 10 years, if we don't stop it, we are going to have a zombie society. In my consti constituency, you will see 11 year olds taking meth. What kind of future are we expecting these youths to have? We are going to have a doped up society, a zombie society. That is not good, he said. In 2018, about 309 kg of ephedrine was seized by the men of NDLA for, from members of the criminal network in Enugu, Southeast, and Festac Town, Lagos, Southwest Nigeria. A major portion of meth produced in Nigeria is exported to South Africa and Southeast Asia where one kilogram reportedly sells up to about 50 to 130,000 euros or 50,000 US dollars. Almost all of the detected trafficking from Nigeria to Asia has involved the use of commercial air couriers. Methods of conveyance include swallowing latex wraps of the drug, concealing on their person or hiding within items like African crafts and souvenirs. So the threats. Increased production in Nigeria, fueled by the fact that the cursor ephedrine and pseudoephedrine, will, while controlled in most developed countries, is readily available in Nigeria. The alliance between Nigeria and Latin Americans cartel has made it easy for the increase in local production and accessibility of the substance. This increased local production has also led to a marked increase in availability and consequently consumption. It is relatively cheap and easy, easily synthesized. According to the United, uh, UNODC, people who use meth have been known to synthesize meth in their own kitchens using common decongestants. Due to the economic insecurity of the country, the youth use meth as a way to cope with the depressed economic situation. Inadequate funding. This is one of the greatest challenges faced in the implementation of the drug treatment program in Nigeria. Poor pre prescription control and drug distribution system, which has hence increase the availability for production and misuse. Availability of treatment centers, about, we have about 48%, and this is located mostly in the southwest region of the country and mostly in the urban areas. High cost of treatment, the scarcity of health insurance coverage for substance abuse treatment, as most people pay from out of pocket. On account of all this, some communities have resorted to devising other means to act as deterrents to the use of drugs in their locality. Example, public caning of offenders. That's a picture of uh, a user being uh, flogged to deter others from using. Increasing the use of violence by rival gangs to control their drug market has also become a threat. Inadequately trained staff, there's debt of internal and external evaluation of treatment processes or outcomes. One study showed only about half of treatment centers carried out regular audits. There's deficient or excessive family support. So dealing with families that are either not supportive, under supportive, or over supportive. Political instability, which are, with its attendant rise in unemployment and economic depression. There's high profit from the sale of the substance, there's low awareness and sensitization, especially among the youth. A focus on more traditional illicit drug use, inadequate development, implementation, monitoring, and evaluation of drug policies. Other factors driving the growing use of meth include poor health seeking behavior, patronizing of religious homes for treatment, spiritual interpretation of drug use problems, little or no substitution and maintenance therapy, insufficient syringe exchange program for injection users not enough and inaccessible structured long-term and rehabilitation services. So in conclusion, the abuse of methamphetamine in Nigeria has grown exponentially in the past few years, especially with the recent proliferation of production labs in different parts of the country. Stricter national requirements and control of precursors of chemicals and psychotropic substances and effective regulations of the, importance of the import of control precursor should be looked into by the government. While the government and the law enforcement agents have made concerted efforts to clamp down on these activities, there remains a lot to be done in order to effectively curb this menace. The government, law enforcement, and communities will need to work in synergy 
to contain the spread of this substance, especially among the vulnerable population. These are my references. And um, thank you all for listening. Thank you so, so much, uh, Dr. Esan Bedo, for that brilliant uh, presentation. I want to believe uh, uh, participants have gained a lot from this uh, presentation. Uh, Ejikemen, I also want to believe that we already have some questions, but before you take it up from here, uh, let me also say that uh, uh, Dr. Esan Bedo has made us to have a very good understanding of what uh, uh, methamphetamine is. And also, uh, he took us uh, through you know, the history of methamphetamine from uh, the global and uh, uh, local uh, perspective. Um, also, was able to uh, uh, highlight you know, what attracts uh, people to use methamphetamine. In other words, uh, the attractions to methamphetamine. Then uh, the stages of use of uh, methamphetamine, as well as uh, the, the consequences associated with each of these uh, uh, stages, and not forgetting the hazard that is associated with uh, the use of methamphetamine uh, generally. Uh, more importantly, uh, the, the speaker also highlighted you know, the, the, the challenges or difficulties associated with uh, uh, quitting or stopping the use of uh, uh, methamphetamine, and uh, also gave us some clue as to uh, how to identify persons uh, who possibly have uh, uh, methamphetamine uh, use uh, uh, disorders and uh, the risk associated with uh, methamphetamine uh, overdose. You will agree with me that a lot, a lot have been said here and. Uh, and we have definitely gained a lot from this uh, presentation. And of course, not forgetting the treatment options. Uh, she also highlighted the treatment uh, options and talks about the fact that uh, combination therapy, combination therapy uh, is, 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 is more promising, you know, as far as, or is one of the promising uh, aspects, you know, uh, to uh, the treatment of uh, methamphetamine use uh, uh, disorders. And not also forgetting, uh, the risk factors or those things that are fueling uh, the use of methamphetamine, in particular in Nigeria, and also uh, those uh, factors or reasons why people will ordinarily want to uh, establish uh, a clandestine drug uh, laboratories for the manufacture of uh, methamphetamine. Uh, the, the, the attraction to that aspect, and of course, uh, the uh, uh, attraction to, to the use. And not also forgetting that the, the, the speaker also made uh, wide ranging recommendations, you know, especially to the government and their stakeholders in drug control. So, once again, I want to say thank you so much for taking us through this very, very important topic at this particular point in time especially considering uh, the, 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 the use of methamphetamine in uh, uh, a section of the country, especially the, the, the southeastern part of the country, where it is uh, commonly referred to as the infirmary and so on. So we may have been talking of methamphetamine, but of course uh, the speaker also at least um, call it uh, as uh, the local term. So for those who possibly didn't hear the speaker say that, this methamphetamine that we're talking about is the same primary crystal meth and so on, depending on what it is called in different uh, localities and parts of uh, the country. So at this point, I want to believe we, are, we should have some questions now. Uh, uh, man, I, I hand over to you to look at the questions we already have and let us move from here. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Mathis. And thank you, Dr. Esambedo. It was really a straight to the point presentation. Yes, we have a question here. The asker is asking, what can individuals do to help curb the mix of methamphetamine? Um, do I take the response immediately or you want me to note it down and answer all? 
Um, so far, this is just the question that we have, so you can go ahead and answer. Okay. Um, well, the, the idea is to be a support system to everyone. So if it's, it's up for you, it's some form of brief intervention you can offer, some form of counseling that um, using the substance at that time may not be, um, um, may not be the best option for whatever it is that you're using it for. You can advise to seek help in centers that um, offer treatment um, to them. And um, that's, that's it. That's basically it. It's just the support. The community plays a role. So you, uh, anyone in the community that, um, that comes across anyone that uses methamphetamine should be able to um, offer some form of counseling, you know, talk, talk therapy, that's it. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, over to you, Dr. Martins. That's just okay. Um, there's just another question that popped up. Um, what platforms are put in place by the Nigerian government for met addicts? Um, we have two questions. I don't know if I could just uh, yes, uh, please put, go. What platforms? That's the first one. What platforms are put in place by the Nigerian government for met addicts? Then there is another question. Can you please summarize the treatment for us? Can you please summarize the treatment for us? There's another question. Okay, can I take this too? Okay, it's all right. Okay, um, well, so far, the government has been able to give us treatment, some form of treatment centers, but unfortunately, these treatment centers are few and located mostly in urban areas. So, um, and people have to pay out of pocket and it is expensive to pay out of pocket. Even though they have given us um, people, some people, most people don't have access to these treatment centers because they are in urban areas far, far away from them. The government, I would say, needs to expand more bring treatment facilities closer to the people, have more within the rural areas, more in the community, and train and retrain staff, staff to be able to um, go into the community and offer help directly to the people. And um, what was the next one? I think it was um, summarizing the treatment, right? Yeah. Okay, so, uh, yes. So treatment for uh, methamphetamine um, abuse is, um, there's no um, known one treatment for everyone. It varies, uh, treatment varies, but it's been said that medications with behavioral therapy is the best option to offer to someone with methamphetamine ab um, abuse. So if someone comes with methamphetamine abuse, um, you would want to first, um, without complications, maybe just dependence, you would want to first detox, detox, detoxify the person, you know, keep him and let him, let the substance wear away and treat any withdrawal symptoms that will come from that. Then from there, you now send for a pre proper rehabilitation where the person will be given a lot of um, the, um, behavioral therapies, cognitive behavioral therapies, other group counseling or group therapy, in, it, it involves a lot. In my center, we do all that. We do the psychotherapy, we do the social work intervention, the situational enhancement therapy, we do the occupational therapy. You know, it involves a whole, it's, just, it's not just one treatment. It's um, a myriad of treatments. So that seems just it. And then remember to always follow up, outpatient follow up, treat and talk about relapse prevention. Because it is when they lapse that they probably overdose. That's why I try to explain why people overdose. Because when they have the lapse, they go back to the, 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 the amount they used prior to treatment. And that can cause an overdose and death. That's it. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Okay, thank you so much. That's well understood now. Um, we have another question. Okay. Uh, Hello? What is the recommended duration for the treatment of those with methamphetamine use disorder? What is the recommended Hello? duration? Yeah, I hear you. Did you get the question? What is the recommended duration? Yeah, what is the recommended um, well, yeah, for the treatment of those with meds use disorder? The thing is that um, the neither has um neither has said that the longer you stay in treatment the better the outcome so in a center we in a center between three to four months is what we recommend but neither recommends that the longer you stay in treatment the better the outcome okay okay thank you so much um another question goes is the government doing to really curb the use of meth, especially among young users? Oh, well, the government, should I, should I turn that question around to like um, what the government, what we expect the government to do? I already said that yeah. they need to open up more treatment centers um rural areas in the community they need to train more employ more staff train and retrain and create employment for the youth you know more better education right now ASU is on strike and you can imagine our students just all over the place doing nothing so all those have to funding funding is very important funding in research funding in treatment funding in, in training all that uh, the, the part of um, what the government needs to do and then fund the agency i must say this funding of the agency the um ndlea agency that are responsible for um um, pub, um, um for carbon the production of met um met amphetamine you know funding them to be able to go out there and search for all these barons and the met labs, you know, so that at least once they keep doing that, you, you will see a decline and gradually this will be um, out of the market. So you don't see a lot of people um, or reduced number of people using. That's why I take. Okay, thank you so much. Now, a participant wants to know a common name that melts called in the southwest of Nigeria. Okay, um, in my presentation, I did give some common names. You have, um, it's called ice, it's called meth, it's called, it's even called Mpurumiri. Mpurumiri is like the common thing. It's called um, speed, it's called crank. And you know that the names keep evolving. I've learned that where I work, I've learned that as you, try to keep abreast with these names and they know you know the names, they change the names. So you have to be like one step ahead. So the names keep evolving and changing. Okay. There's another question here. Um, with the online sales and measures to prevent the distribution of meth through the online platforms? Well, that's a challenge, yeah. It is a challenge. And um, surely, yeah, I think the government should look into that because we know that during the COVID period, we had a lot, a lot of young people reporting that they were able to assess or buy this uh, methamphetamine online so you have people bringing it since they couldn't go out so i think the government has to also look check meet some of these um online um platforms that um offer these services right now i don't know of any i don't know of any measure for that um how that is but 
it's a recommendation. A government should look into that. And even the men of the NDLEA, they can use that um, those platforms to trace other because it's a cartel, you know, the cartel. So they can use that and trace all the barons and um, um, the peddlers of this um, substance. Okay, thank you. Um, we have another question, which may be the last question. But before that, uh, before you respond to this question, we would like to know if MI motivational interviewing is an important uh, treatment tool for meth. Now, after you have uh, made your comment on that, a participant wants to know where he can get a quality treatment center for meth abuse in the northwestern part of Nigeria. Okay. So motivational interview, yes, it is. You know, at times when the when, when um, users come into the hospital, when they are involuntarily brought into the hospital, we use motivational interview to make them understand, to move them from the state of I don't want help to a state of okay, maybe there's a little problem to the next stage of okay, what is the help you can offer me? Because I really see that there's a problem and I want to. So it's very, very important. We use it a lot in my center. I believe um, that motivational interview is a good therapy for people with methamphetamine. Yes. Then um the next question, sorry, what was it? Um yeah, where, where we okay. can get a good uh, treatment facility in the northwestern part of Nigeria. Northwest, that being um, just Kaduna. Kaduna, you have you have this uh, Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Kaduna. You have um, the Jude Teaching Hospital, the psychiatry department. You have NGOs, you have some hot NGOs that offer this um, form of treatment. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. But just um, as we were dealing with those questions, some other questions popped up. Let me quickly go through them. Um, this one, the participant is asking, countries of the world are advocating for harm reduction. Why mm -hmm. is taking root in Nigeria? Why? Why is harm reduction not taking root in Nigeria? Okay, yeah, we're looking into that. If we, if we listen up, I also mentioned that um, uh, because we don't really have um, 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 harm reduction in a lot of sense, we didn't start with harm reduction. We are trying to evolve, uh, evolve into harm reduction because um in nigeria treatment pattern was more like stop 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 but you see because we had a lot of people coming down with um hiv um hepatitis b hepatitis c from needle sharing so we are evol evolving into harm reduction services so yeah we are gradually getting into it and um, i'm sure with time we're going to pick up with the harm reduction exchange of needles and all that gradually Okay, a quick one. What are the other benefits of these drugs? Of methamphetamine? Yeah, the, the, the participants is making reference to meds. Well, I, I, like I mentioned, people use meds for different reasons. The students use it for concentration. Some people use it for alertness. Um, females most especially use it because they want to call the emotions, they want to be able to stay in control of their lives. You know, as a woman, you have different roles, role as a mother, wife, career woman. So when they take it, it um, balances out their um, work and uh, role as wife and mother, and also to lose weight. Yes, yeah, a lot of people use it to, use, to lose weight. So those are the supposed benefits that they get from meth use. Okay, any positive benefits? Well, for the users, those are the positive benefits because someone says, um, 
I'm obese, I want to lose weight and I take meds, I will lose weight. For that person, that is the supposed benefit he or she is um, getting. Or a student says, I want to concentrate and if I take meds, it keeps me awake, I can read. That is the benefit for that person, yes. Okay, the last one. What's the name of your center? Oh, uh, my center is Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Yaba, Lagos. Okay, thank you so much. That's all the questions that we have. Thank you. Thank uh, you very much. Full presentation. Over to you, Dr. Mattis. Uh, thank you so much, Ejikeme, uh, uh, for that uh, brilliant uh, Q&A uh, session. And uh, thank you, Dr. Sangbedo, for responding to the questions uh, brilliantly. Uh, yes, uh, there are challenges, no doubt, but somehow, uh, step by step, we'll be able to overcome uh, these uh, uh, challenges. Uh, just adding to the last point you made, you know, actually on the issue of benefits of uh, uh, the use of uh, methamphetamine. Um, generally, generally, for persons who use any substance at all, there are certain things uh, they, they derive from it that makes them to want to continue to use in the first place. But that is not to encourage, you know, the use of uh, these psychoactive substances if they are not prescribed, especially the, the prescription medications. If they are not prescribed, there shouldn't be any reason why one should use it. In other words, if they are not prescribed, uh, the consequences may eventually outweigh the benefits that one may be deriving uh, from it. So, uh, yeah, there are instances people say, why do people take these substances? After all, there are no benefits. The truth about it is that if they are not, if they are not counting what they are deriving from it as benefits, they wouldn't want to continue. So that yeah. is very good that we understand that from the professional perspectives so that we can meet them where they are and help them to address you know, the challenges. Because if we don't meet them where they are, <laughs> we become judgmental. And uh, once we become judgmental, it becomes you, you set a barrier between you as a professional and they who ordinarily need them. So, and that also brings us to the aspect of a harm reduction. Uh, it is based on all of this that uh, uh, we need to understand, you know, the, the challenges, you know, that uh, people who use psychotic substances face, especially how difficult it is for people to quit. You know, actually, when we talk about abstinence, 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 and so on, that over time has been the focus of treatment interventions. But science has also made us to understand that beyond abstinence, we should, you know, develop harm reduction. We should introduce harm reduction to uh, treatment interventions, uh, so that we don't just focus on abstinence and eventually lost, you know, treatment interventions completely. And uh, just to address the point you made earlier, you know, your response to the harm reduction aspect that we are gradually evolving. Uh, let me also add that harm reduction is actually now a policy of the government of Nigeria. So it is no longer how it used to be before, where you know there was so much resistance to harm reduction and so on. Even though it is evolving, because I let me quickly add to that. Uh, one thing is for uh, somebody something to be in the policy document. Another thing is the implementation. But the, the, the bottom line is that, for example, in the National Drug Control Master Plan, uh, 2021 to 2025. That is uh, the first uh, document, to the best of my knowledge, of a policy document that has a reduction component in. So that also shows that Nigeria is advancing as far as at least embracing harm reduction is concerned. I'm also aware of uh, the launch of a harm reduction uh, uh, document in, in, in Nigeria. It was launched uh, recently, uh, I think earlier this year or so, you know, so which means there are protocols now for harm reduction in Nigeria. And uh, we want to challenge professionals uh, and uh, stakeholders in this area to, to peer into this policy direction and, uh, and drive harm reduction you know, to, to, uh, to, to, to fruition, especially that 
harm reduction is not encouraging continuation of drug use, but it is based on the science that you know we need to help people who use drugs to be alive first before eventually you can talk of you know addressing their, their substance use. Uh, if one way you know to make them alive and uh, minimize the pains they go through is uh, uh, through harm reduction. If they can if they can do it you know as an abstinence stop without any form of harm reduction interventions, why not? But again, you know, harm reduction has been uh, proven to be uh, uh, effective for those who may need such interventions. And uh, uh, in summary, because we are, we are almost out of time, uh, let me say that just like the, 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 the speaker said, uh, one of the challenges we have is that uh, we need more capacity in terms of, I mean, uh, treatment professionals who have good understanding of the different uh, psychoactive substances and the peculiarities, you know, and uh, the treatment protocols for each of these uh, uh, substances. If we have such professionals and we have the facilities across uh, Nigeria, it becomes easier. Uh, I know in most cases, it's always good to be some kind of jack of all trade, you know, uh, so on, but you will discover that with time, you will have people who are even specialists in methamphetamine uh, management and, and so on. So that when you go to a particular uh, uh, facility, you will know who to even refer to among the experts there. But what is important is that uh, persons who need help um, for any form of uh, substance use disorders should seek help from treatment uh, facilities, you know, treatment facilities whether uh, neuropsychiatric hospitals or facilities that have been approved for treatment interventions and so on, and also to encourage referral where you don't have uh, adequate personnel to handle a particular issue, then you refer. But what is important is first assess treatment uh, facility, they will refer uh, uh, accordingly. So uh, on this note, once again, I want to thank uh, each and every one for being part of this uh, uh, wonderful session. I've learned a lot myself, you know, from this from the presentation of Dr. Isan Bedo. And, uh, and I want to believe that uh, uh, others have also learned from this uh, uh, presentation. So let's keep the discussion ongoing. Uh, we'll definitely be having another session again in November. Please join us. And I also want to assure you that uh, this, uh, this session is being recorded and the, the, the recordings will be shared uh, accordingly. And also the slide, you know, uh, Dr. Sam Bedo's slide will be shared. And if you have any question or any clarification, please do feel free to reach out to us at ISOP. Uh, my phone number is almost everywhere. So uh, before you ask people about my contact, they will give you, they can also give you even the speaker's uh, phone contact. If she will oblige us, I know she will. Then uh, the ISOP number two, you know, you can call ISOP number and so on. Of course, you can also go to the website and reach out to us. We will definitely follow up on this and, how, and see how we can be of support to you. So at this point, once again, I say thank you everyone for being part of this uh, session. Uh, thank you, EGKM, for the uh, brilliant presentation. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sangbedo, for the excellent uh, uh, presentation. So. On behalf of uh, ISOP Nigeria chapter, I want to also thank uh, the ISOP, uh, Olivia, uh, Radov, and uh, colleagues from the ISOP at the global level for being of support to us. So once again, we look forward to seeing you some time. So bye for now. Bye, thank you.